You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is about getting free of debt. And I wanted to go into a little bit more detail about this because I talked about um, different milestones for financial freedom in uh, last week's episode. So I thought it would be interesting to talk in a bit more detail about some of those milestones. And so this one today is about getting to a position where you are net worth positive or in particular, as part of that process, getting out of debt. There are loads and loads of resources out there for tips and techniques and um, ideas about good ways of getting out of debt. And I'm not going to provide any help with that because I think that's something that there's lots of people writing about and I don't have particularly great insights into specific tips and techniques. But I do have experience of being significantly in debt and of getting out of debt. And what I want to talk about is how debt impacts on your freedom and what the opportunities are for getting out of debt. Because for so many people, uh, getting out of debt is something that is such a stress and so difficult and such a hassle. And the upside at the end of it, I don't think that's even very clear, you know, what the what the benefits are, um, apart from a sense of obligation that, you know, you maybe you should get out of debt. So what I thought I'd talk about is what, you know, what the opportunities are uh, when you do get out of debt, what the benefits are in terms of freedom. So those are, those are some of the things that we'll cover. As usual, I should say that these are just my thoughts on the subject. This isn't financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor of any kind. I'm just stating my opinions about this. I hope that hearing about my experiences will be interesting for you, but they are just my opinions. In talking about this, though, I do want to start with the the kind of background for how people get into debt. And I think it's really important to recognize that that debt is the norm in our culture now, today. We we definitely have a debt-oriented society, um, particularly at this point in history. And so if you want to get out of debt, you will be very much swimming against the stream. Um, You'll be going against the kind of background culture and all of the cultural messages that you receive, just as some kind of introduction to that, I think it's really important to recognize that debt is something that is actively encouraged by government policy in a number of ways. In the times that we live in, there is a conscious effort to encourage you to get into debt. So for example, we live in an age of fiat currencies where the money that we use is just paper. It doesn't have any fundamental asset backing it. In, in the past, there was a time when any paper currency that you used could be converted into gold or silver. So you could go to a bank and actually claim precious metals as a substitute for the paper that you, that you were carrying. It was like um, a, just carrying a receipt for something real and tangible. And that meant that if you made savings, you had real tangible things backing up those savings. We now live in an age where money is just paper. It's all just a game of people trusting that central banks and governments will sort of look after the currency. Whereas, in fact, the currency is expanded so significantly that we have a constant background inflation In other words, a decline in the purchasing power of money. And that means that if you make savings, the money that you save is worth less and less. So you have to find a way to invest the money to overcome this problem of savings. And in fact, this directly discourages you from making savings. You might as well spend the money while it's worth more rather than keep it for the future. And that, of course, ultimately pushes you towards more spending and less saving and therefore towards more debt as well. Also, if the money in the future is going to be worth less, well, you might as well take out more debt now because you'll be paying back 
money that's worth less in the future. So inflation itself is an encouragement to debt. Not only do we have the background of inflation, but we also have active policy um, in our times uh, called financial repression. And this is where central banks hold interest rates artificially low. And they hold art uh, interest rates low because they want to encourage spending, consumer spending. Rather than save their money, they want people to go out and spend it. And so these low interest rates mean that if you do save money, you're actually penalized. You, you know, not only is your money losing value because of inflation, but you can't even recover that through interest on your savings because interest rates are held so low. And so this makes money cheap, which encourages debt. That's something that is actively pursued as a policy in most of the developed world at the moment. So there is an, a conscious effort by the people who control the money supply to encourage people to get into debt. So the kinds of policies that are pursued consciously by the people who control the money supply end up actively encouraging debt and as much debt as possible. And this filters through into our culture. It filters through into the kinds of messages that you receive and the kinds of opportunities that you have in your life and the financial choices that you face um, in all your decisions about various things in life. So there's many examples of this. Debt is something that is very much embedded in every step of life. So for example, if you go to university, uh, you're very likely to get into a significant amount of student debt. And that will be seen as just part of the process that you will get into debt, you'll carry that debt for years and years, if not decades, um, while you slowly, hopefully pay it off. And that's just seen as a standard thing to do as part of the kind of life experience of going to university. When you go to university, you will also be given things from your bank, um, like free overdraft facilities. They'll probably give you um, additional loan facilities. And these, again, will load you up with a load of debt, all based on the assumption that when you finish university, you know, you're going to then be in a position where this debt is going to get paid down. But it's treated um, as just part of the process. Even if you don't go to university or if you don't go to college, there's still the consumer debt culture that we live in. So, for example, there's the availability of buying on credit for consumption items, whether that's through credit cards or through higher purchase agreements or store cards or whatever it is. There's a very, very pervasive culture of buying consumer goods on credit so buying things that you are going to consume that aren't going to make any money for you, you're just going to consume them, whether they be televisions or kitchen goods or whatever it is, you're, there's stuff for you to consume um, and you, you pay with, with, uh, with credit over a longer period of time, which involves taking on more debt. There is also a culture of home ownership being the norm, being something that people should aspire to or strive for. And it's considered to be an achievement to to purchase a home and something of a milestone in people's lives that this is something they should do, buy their own house and so forth. And again, that involves usually taking on a huge debt known as a mortgage. And that is considered to be not just a normal thing to do, but also a good thing to do, a sensible thing to do to take on this massive debt despite the fact that the home you live in is ultimately just a consumption item as well. You may be able to sell it in the future, it might raise in value, but that is unsure. It could also fall in value, and the only thing that's sure is the amount of debt that you take on when you take on a mortgage. Plus, you, you have to live somewhere, so even if you do sell your home, you've still got to buy another one or find another place to live. So we have a background government policy which ends up actively encouraging debt, we see how that filters through into all of the opportunities for getting into debt that you face either through student debt or consumer debt or mortgage debt. And I think at an individual level, that means that debt becomes a way of life um, for most people. 
people actually internalize this approach towards debt where it's considered a norm and it's considered something that you just do getting into debt. And that also makes it very, very hard if you want to be free of debt and if you want to aim towards getting to a point where you don't have debt because you're moving towards financial freedom, you really are swimming against the current of the culture itself. And unfortunately, when debt becomes a way of life, it really seeps into how you think about it. And this means that if you are in debt, you become susceptible to rationalizing it and coming up with good reasons why you're in debt and why it makes sense to be in debt. It can lead to becoming over-optimistic about it in terms of thinking that, you know, you may be in debt now, but things just around the corner are going to take care of it your house is going to go up in value or your job is going to mean that you're going to get more money and pay off your consumer debt or whatever it is. And those kinds of rationalizations can really interfere with thinking about how you're going to get out of debt. And sadly, the worst of all is that I think that the virtue of thrift is not talked about. It's not considered to be relevant in our culture, in our times. Being frugal or frugality is not something that you get a lot of positive messages about that you really see a lot in our culture. The norm is to be in debt, not to be thrifty or frugal. And the problem with debt is that ultimately you're always reducing your freedom when you're in debt. Even if there is a good reason to do it, even if you think that there's an opportunity that comes from being in debt, the direct cost is that it does reduce your freedom. Whoever is lending you the money, whether or not you get easy credit from somewhere, which seems like it's a good deal and it's easy and you're able to get a credit card or a student loan or whatever it is, ultimately you're borrowing from your future self. It's your future self that is going to carry the burden of this debt. And when you take on debt, you're pushed further away from the ultimate goal of financial freedom. So if financial freedom is your goal, It may be a strategy that you think makes sense to get into debt for a certain amount of time, but I think it's important to recognize that doing so does take you in the wrong direction. It takes you further away from financial freedom, at least while you've got that debt. Maybe I'll talk just a bit about my experience of debt. I have been significantly in debt in the past. I was always very, very wary of consumer debt. I never carried a credit card balance. I never got into a significant um, consumer debt of any kind. But I did take out significant personal loans to fund my business. When I started a business, I eventually was personally liable for half of the loans that we took out, which ended up, when we paid them all back, it was over £100,000. It's about 150, in fact. So I do know what it's like to be personally liable for very, very significant debts. And I know how that weighs on your mind. Even if it's just in the background, the time that you have debt, it really weighs on your mind. And I think it's very difficult when you're in debt to see how different it's going to feel when you do get out of debt. When you're in debt, paying down of debt just feels like bitter medicine that you have to take. Um, You don't really get any direct benefit from it that you can see um, and it just seems to be one of those things that maybe you should do so in my case for the first few years of my company making profits I didn't really see any of that I didn't properly pay myself and I wasn't able to really see the benefits of all the hard work that we put in to making the company profitable because we put all those profits into paying down our debts and that period of paying down the debt isn't much fun and it can be a long time too it was five years uh, in in my business from when we started to when we paid off all of our startup debts and I hope maybe one of the things that is useful to talk about in this podcast is what the opportunity is at the end of that tunnel when you actually do get out of debt for increasing your personal freedom because When you do pay off your debts, that constant background nagging worry that you have about the debts is removed. And 
that gives you an immediate benefit in terms of your sense of freedom and your your reduction in the amount of stress and worry that you have all the time when you're in debt. I immediately found that I slept better, I had a much, much more relaxed feeling and I just felt a sense of freedom that came from getting out of debt. Again, in the case of my business, when we had debt, the business itself was really just fixed on paying off that debt. That was what we had to do. That was the, the main thing that we needed to focus on was getting to a point where we paid off the debt and we had no leeway as to where we wanted to take the company or what else we wanted to consider doing. Whereas once we paid off the debt, you know, all of a sudden we had a lot of options. We could really even consider, you know, do we want to carry on with this? Is this worth it? Are there other things that we'd like to do? How, how do we want to see the business grow? Where do we want to take it? And it just meant that we had a lot more freedom to decide how we wanted to develop the business and what we personally wanted to get out of working in, on the business. Another thing that um, I know, talking to other people about their experiences, when you're in debt, money is just a burden in your life. Every financial decision that you make about spending things has this kind of mild stress attached to it related to that debt. When you pay off your debts, money can become pleasure again because you can actually just enjoy spending money on a meal or whatever it is that you choose to do you know, without having that nagging concern about the debt in the back of your mind. So you can actually enjoy the freedom that comes of using your money uh, in your own life in a way that when you're in debt, you just don't get that feeling of enjoyment, or at least it's not the same. And I think getting out of debt is also an aspect of self-care. You know, it's an aspect of personal financial self-care that you are freeing your future self from those obligations that getting into debt gives your future self. It means that your options are far, far more open about what you can do. It gives you much more opportunity to be picky and choosy about the kind of work that you want to do, whether or not you want to take a break from working. Uh, you know, you can, that's something that you can work towards much more easily. When you're in debt, you know, you've always got that payment schedule that you need to be um, paying back. And that significantly restricts your freedom of action. In terms of self-care, you get to do things like just look after yourself more, buy, get yourself a haircut, these kinds of things, which are when you're in debt, the, every little decision like that is, is um, more laden with stress and, and difficulty. And ultimately, when you're out of debt, you're one step further on the path towards financial freedom, towards getting to a point where, you know, after you get out of debt, you start to build up savings and you start to build up enough assets so that if you did want to take a break from work you would be able to and so that you start to have passive income coming from your investments or your savings where not only are you working but you're also getting money that's working for you giving you additional savings additional assets and over time you know you can build those up to a point where you can actually have a, a very significant um, amount more freedom in your life to choose to do the kind of work that you love rather than the kind of work that you feel you need to do in order to pay off debts and then ultimately to have more freedom to live the way that you want to and that I think is the benefit that you don't see when you're in debt is the lack of freedom that debt entails and the amount of freedom that just that that one step of getting out of debt gives you so I hope that's useful and yeah, I'd be very interested to hear any thoughts you have on this. If you're working towards getting out of debt, there are loads of resources online and things that you can do to get help with getting out of debt. And I really wish you the very best in doing so. I think it's a fantastic goal to have. And I think it gives you a hell of a lot more freedom in your life. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.